I'm Sammy Gardner, and this is the Career Kickstart Show. I am super excited because I have Janice Chaka on the show today, and she's going to tell me all about, we're going to talk about introverts in the workplace. She is the founder of the careerintrovert.com, so she's going to give us the total scoop disclosure. I've known Janice for a while. I'm a big fan. So this is just me having a fun chat with a buddy. Now, Janice, hop on in here and tell us a little bit more about yourself. I don't know. I think you did a really good job. If the introvert in me is just going to let you just ride, <laughs> just not say anything. Um, yeah, my name is Janice Chaka, and I am the founder of thecareerintrovert.com. This started because... Wow, I didn't realize I was an introvert till later on in life, way too late. And I would have done some things differently. I don't know if my life would be totally different, but definitely would have done some more self-preservation had I known I was an introvert early on in life. And so I end up helping people like figure that out and use it to take the next step in their careers or move out on their own and become a digital nomad. Ooh, you know what? That's one of those things that me and Janice have in common. That's one of the best things about being a digital nomad is not only do you really have an excuse never to go to family functions, you also meet cool people on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wrong. I am currently visiting my family right now, and I forgot all of the things I'm obligated to do because I have five brothers and sisters, and they are consistently breeding. There's so uh, much I have to do. I get out of that. I have no family. So for me, that's actually what makes being a digital nomad that much easier. I don't have to go back for the family stuff because I don't have it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, if you want some family, I, like I said, I got, I got five brothers and sisters. I can give you one. Oh, thanks. You're so kind. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not a people person. Don't try and make this something it isn't. <laughs> well, then now we're getting back to the meat and potatoes of, you know, the peoples and the humans. So let's get back to being an introvert. You know, you talk about how you help introverts discover who they are, their strengths. What do you usually work with, you know, when you're dealing with the career stuff? How do you usually help people specifically with careers? Like, what are their problems? What's going on with the introverts in the workplace? One of the main problems I've come across is that they have extrovert managers who say, oh, you can't get the promotion because you don't network well enough, or you don't shout about things that you do and are good at well enough. You don't show up in meetings, not show up physically, but show up loudly. And therefore you don't get the promotion even though you've done the work. So you've done the work, you deserve it. You're good at what you do, but you can't get that promotion because you're not visible enough according to someone else's standards. Okay. I can see that being a big issue. You know, there's a lot of companies that can be really political. So if you're not a political animal willing to play the good old, you know, kissing the baby, shaking the hands, that's going to be difficult. Once they kind of realize they're an introvert, they know that they're being passed up. How do you, do you help them stand out more or do you help them find a different job? How do you help them navigate this situation? The most common thing that I've found with people is just giving them the little tools that they might need to show up in the way that is expected without sort of losing their introversion. So as far as meetings are concerned, making sure that there is a, there's a word in my head, an agenda in advance is super helpful for introverts to have that time to kind of look and see what's going to be talked about so they have an idea and are ready. So if they can get that as part of their, their company system, it makes their life easier. Telling their manager that, oh, you know, you can pick on me now, but just wait, I'll, I'll need to think about this and then I'll get back to you. Being more vocal about their needs and not basing it on, I'm an introvert, so I need to do this. Because unfortunately, people have a very negative connotation when they hear the word introvert. And once you're locked in that box, if someone specifically thinks, oh, they're an introvert, they can't do this. Oh, they're an introvert, they can't do that. It's really hard to get out. So the idea is to raise sort of your visibility but without being like, it's because I'm an introvert, I need to do this. It's just, you want me to work better, you want results. This is how I work. You work like this, I work like that. We can work together in this way or that way. Yeah, well, managing your manager is one of those key skills that everybody needs because that's the thing. You can be a great manager. You can have a lot of the experience and the education, but you also need your employees to tell you what they need. 
earlier in the podcast, you were talking about how you wish that you had known that you were an introvert when you were younger, so you could learn how to compensate. You know, is that so you could strategize or figure out what's the most efficient way for you to do something? Like for me, I consider myself an introvert. I'm just like, I'm a social sprinter. You know, I can be real fun and then I'm like, it's 11, I gotta leave. So for me, since I have a very social job, I do most of my client calls on Monday and Tuesday. I try to just be like, I know what I'm in for. Is that like what you're talking about? Trying to figure out strategies to like, for me, I call it my people well, train my people well. Um, well, for example, one of my clients, she was doing two jobs. She was, they didn't give her the promotion, but made her do the extra job thing that happens. And so she had less and less time and they keep scheduling back to back to back to back meetings, which is ter- terrible for everyone, but it's super terrible for introverts. And so I had her sort of rearrange her schedule a little bit to make sure that she had time to recharge, ask questions, get back to people and think about what had happened in the past meeting and or think about what was going to happen in the next meeting. As far as me, there's probably some jobs I wouldn't have done and or I might have left one of my jobs sooner. (laughs) Because definitely one of the jobs that I did, it was very much about going out every Friday night with the boss and the team and they used to go on vacation with everyone and there was no dividing line between work and your private life and I'm very much about having that dividing line. Mm -hmm. And so I would get nowhere. I'd come in on time, leave on time, everything was done, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Ugh. That sounds awful. Like, don't get me wrong. I've been on teams where I'm like, I love all these people. These people are great. But like, I want to go home. Like, even as a digital nomad, home is where my stuff and my Netflix is. You know, I got like a Kindle at home that's waiting for me. (laughs) It needs me. (laughs) Because I completely get where you're coming from. And I feel like, you know, just to switch gears a little bit, because we've talked a lot about introverts in the workplace and the different things they can do. But let's talk about, you know, the fact that we're both introverts and we're both online entrepreneurs. For me, sometimes you're talking about privacy. I feel that same way, even as I'm like the face of my brand. And it feels kind of weird. Your face is on your branding and stuff. What's the navigating this whole like being part of this social media Facebook Twitterverse while still being like there's a lot of noise and a lot of people and I want to be there but I also want to be wrapped up in a blanket and not talking to anybody so it took me years to figure this out one thing is make it a numbers game there are millions millions of people in the world do you know how many people actually know about you and care it is relatively wise like- yeah you're not going to be Oprah, no offense. We're not going to be Oprah, we're not going to be, <laughs> like, we're just not going to happen, which is fine. You only need, like, a sliver of people. You're making a difference still. It's just not as widespread as... as yeah, we're not going to be Oprah. I yeah, mean, that you thanks fit. for saying it, Janice. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Put it out there. Set, I'm setting <laughs> your expectations. That's what it's about, setting your expectations. <laughs> you're breaking the dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, there's only so much information that's out there. Okay, you say you know me. What's my favorite color? Uh, I'm going to guess blue. Nope. <laughs> what is it? I'm not telling you. Then other people would know, and I can't use that question in other podcasts or, <laughs> or the interviews. Forget that. But yeah, there's, there is some information out there, but there isn't enough for someone to track me down if they needed to. A lot of my stuff, there's stuff out there, information out there, but I travel. People don't know where I am right now, for example. You, you'll see me Instagramming, yeah. but I have, I have pictures from years that I can just pull up and, and post. It doesn't matter. True. Where so, in the world is, is Janice? That's one of the questions. Like one of my clients is like, so where are you now? <laughs> what are you doing? Where are you going next week? And so you do have control. And I think the problem is we feel we've lost control of how much information is out there because mm-hmm. there's so much of it and they've bombarded so much. You do have control to a certain degree about what information is out there and what isn't. And just pick one or two social media. Don't go crazy. It took me the longest while not to make a blog and just to do a podcast. And then somehow I realized six months ago, I, I have content. I never had content before. Now I've got all this content. I'm just like, oh, I can do this and do that. <laughs> it took a while to get going. It took years. But still, pick one or two. Try not to get overwhelmed. And just remember, you are one speck of sand in you know, the, the big, whole, wide world. And you are making a difference. But you know, yeah, not everyone's yeah. going to know you. And, and you, you can go to a different country and no one's going to be like, oh, my God. Except that happened to me, so. Well, I mean, not everybody's the famous Janice, but no, like, I get what you mean. I have 
question, and this might just be me, where like if I get too many Facebook messages or emails, there's a part of me that has to like force myself to sit down and start responding. Like I am so bad with sending back replies to instant messenger because there's a part of me that's just like, oh, you're not here, but somehow I have to interact with you, even if I like the person and I feel so bad where I'm like, I've had that with partners where I love you so much. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> not now. I'm good. Um, I don't have Facebook on my phone. If you are, and people are going to be disappointed about this, if you're actually friends with me, you'll have my WhatsApp number because I will respond to that. I'm Ooh. on Facebook on and off during the day. It looks like I'm on there all the time, but I like log in, do a thing and then log back out again. I don't like Facebook. I, I actively avoid Facebook if I can. I have a presence on there and I do my own posts. I don't like buffer it or anything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not my method of choice. And so, yeah, I don't have it on my phone. And plus it eats up a bunch of space. I don't, I don't have Facebook on my phone. I don't have Twitter on my phone. I don't have LinkedIn on my phone. Like yeah. email and WhatsApp is the only way you're going to get a hold of me. I like that you have layers of VIP status. You know, the entourage has to jump through hoops before they get some real FaceTime with Miss Janice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I want to protect myself because like you said, all those notifications, you're just like, oh, too many. And then there's a certain threshold where you're like, and then you, the more you ignore it, the worse it's going to be. It gets worse, even though you know it's going to take you like one minute to be like, sure thing, surely I'll do that, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, oh, surely it's been a month. <laughs> and I just have not wanted to do anything with that. Well, don't you have canned responses? Like Gmail has canned responses. And I know that like other apps sort of give you an idea of how to respond. Don't you even use those? I mean, that's a really good idea. I should start doing that. I know, Janice. I know. I'm like such a smart person in some very specific ways, and then I'm a little bit dopey. <laughs> in a lot of yeah, Gmail can messages. My goodness, you should have a checklist like the lazy introvert's guide to seeming on top of their inbox. <laughs> well, you also, well, the problem now is. With everything that's going on, a lot of third-party vendor stuff you can't use the way you used to on like LinkedIn, on Facebook and everything else. Oh, yeah. And with, what is it, GDPR that everybody talks about? Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of American clients going, oh, it's, uh, we'll just delete those. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I know, America, our whole thing is like, we're just not talking to Europe then. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Don't well, eat them anyway. Uh, bam, bam. Isolation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting, but yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. It's yeah. Mm. Ah, e. No, mm. I feel you. And you know what the thing is, is that I think we can all agree as we go through these different platforms, you do have the ability to make some boundaries, whether or not, you know, you are using the, the European Union laws to create them for you, but you can. I think what I'm getting from a lot of years is that I just need to be better at saying no to things, including apps on my phone, because that's my problem is that I like people so much in theory <laughs> and then I actually like get to the thing where I agreed to like go or the day of and you're just like can everyone just cancel I'm bad at saying no when it comes to working with people and doing stuff because it seems like such a good idea at the time until I actually have to like put on a bra and leave my house oh oh bras no I no. know what do you what do you say to your clients who have the same problem who are introverted but it's not like they're people haters so they're always saying yes to things for the day of they're like but I'd rather stay home how do you how do you teach them how to say no Janice there are many ways to say no actually wait I think I posted this recently there's like a worksheet of ways to say no and sort of what you can say no about as the guy with the equivalent of the avocados goes by you say no it depends how well they know you you can be like oh something's come up or I have something that I'd like to do the thing is saying yes in the first place that's the first problem. I think that's where I go wrong. <laughs> I'm really good at bailing out of stuff, Janice. Like, don't get me wrong. I I have, like, that's where my canned responses actually are, is getting out of things politely. 
But what about getting into them? Don't say yes all the time. Just say, I'll get back to you. So you can go back, think, look at your calendar. Because sometimes I've, I've, no, I've been known to double book or be like, oh, I've got that event, that event, that event. Oh my goodness, I'm going to die. So don't always feel you have to say yes straight away. Say, I'll get back to you. Or I just need to check something. You don't need to go into specifics like I need to check my, my, my non-existent calendar. Just say, I just need to check and I'll get back to you. That's it. Then step back, take your decision. What does it do for you? Does it further your career? Is it a hobby thing? Does it get you in front of someone that you want to talk to? Is it someone you actually like? If it's not part of your values, then don't, don't do it. I, the problem these days is we feel so beholden to other people and what other people think. I blame Facebook and Instagram for the pretty photos and like, oh, my life isn't as good as that. Doesn't yeah. matter. Stick to you. Stick to your values. Have three values. Stick to them. You should be fine. No, that's, I like that stalling tactic. That's a good one because usually like once I agree to things, you give me a good hour or two. That's really when my intuition is like, you don't want to do that. So if I give myself that good hour or two to think it over, I think that's what I need because usually they, they're gone and I'm back to being alone and I remember how good that is. <laughs> Or you're like, oh, who else is going to be there? Or what else is going to happen? And then what? Yeah, just, yeah. just and, it's all. Ooh, and you know what? When I'm nomading, I can be such a little like, go with the flow, go on, get along. But when it comes to like me just planning stuff and I'm back in the States, I'm like, I need a timetable. I need a list of attendees. I need to know if there will be snacks and I prefer there to be at least one dog for me to pet. You know, I get really demanding, but I think this stalling technique of yours, I think that, I think that will do nicely in my introvert toolkit. <laughs> Cause that's the thing. Like I love people. I like talking to people and then like slowly the light dims and I'm just like, let me go home now. <laughs> And then you hit a wall and then it's like, Meh. yeah, do you hit the wall? Is that like with your clients where like, for me, it's like, I'm like, happy, happy, happy. I hit the wall. And then I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be grumpy. <laughs> like It's like, I'm like a little toddler. I'm like, oh, I'm grumpy now. Yeah. It's knowing when that's going to happen. Sometimes you know it's going to happen and you push through like it's for an event or whatever, but make sure you have a treat at the end or you know that you're going to get your alone time. I know some people do floats, some people do massages, some people put music in. If you can stop halfway through and at least break it up a little, mm -hmm. can be helpful just to, you know, a five minute like recharge can be better than nothing and charge before you go to the event because there's nothing worse than being like half full and then having to go to another event and another event because you're going to hit empty real quick. But yes, it's a case of managing your energy, knowing what your boundaries are and not being afraid to be like, oh, nope, I'm done. I'm good. I need to, I need to leave now. I need to, <laughs> like I have signals. It's like, I, I need to leave now. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of signals, I know that we've been, we've been going for a while, but I always, I don't know how, but I end up dating extroverts and it's because they meet me at public occasions and they're like wow this girl's really outgoing <laughs> then it's a real bait and switch when they realize what my home life is like they're like you're so exciting you travel the world and we met on a rooftop and i'm like take me home baby and it's just no bras and leggings and a lot of reruns <laughs> um, <laughs> so like how do you how do you deal with having like a partner where you're like okay i'm good at leaving right now here's my signal let's go like for me i'm really good at leaving like my extrovert with people and being like here you go here are the people that are your new people now well i'll see you when you come home but i know not everybody else is like what are your advice for your clients who have to just leave a situation and possibly extroverted loved ones train them train your extrovert because they don't know. The thing is, as introverts, we totally assume that you tell them, I'm an introvert, and they're going to know, oh, this means X, Y, and Z. But it doesn't, because everyone's individual. Everyone has their own barriers, what they like, what they don't like, how much social time they can deal with, blah, 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 blah. So communicate. If you don't tell people, they're not going to know. So I've taken to training. My mind's not a super extrovert, but extrovert enough that I'm just like, okay, I need to go now. You go. He's the kind of person that will take 20 minutes to say goodbye, and I'm like, bye. But he has to say bye individually to everyone. Oh, the goodbye tour. I, I hate the goodbye tour. I'm just like, wave to everybody. Yep. Bye. Peace. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm also really pretty independent. So I, I tend to pick up other people who are independent in that way. I don't do the whole, well, we have to use the same car kind of thing. Like, I'm, I know how to get home. <laughs> 
Let's buy. Or I'll be outside reading my Kindle. Let me know when you're done. No, that's legit. I mean, that's why they made those benches at the mall. That's why there's benches in parks, I presume, so introverts can just, like, wait there quietly looking <laughs> at birds. <laughs> Getting some nature, grounding a little bit. Yeah, you know, just waiting for the extrovert to, to get done, because that's how they charge. Like, I understand that. It's why, like, you know, I had this going away thing with some friends in Mexico, and me and Janice have a mutual friend, lovely girl named Marisa, very outgoing, and I knew that I was about ready to, like, crash, and some other people were going to go home, and I was like, nah, man, she's still ready to go. So I managed to end the evening and dropping her off at a digital nomad meetup, where it's like, okay, here you go, Marisa, we're dropping you off. (laughs) There's no people for you to charge from. There you go, I can totally see that happening, yeah. Your evening continues, because that's the thing, I think it's still, like, it's both a back and forth, introverts and extroverts, you know, we can all learn to understand each other's needs. Right, it's just communicating. And they come in handy. (laughs) I have my extrovert friends plan all my my events. Like, I want to have a nice birthday party. I'm just really bad at planning them. And then you get an extrovert, and they'll do it. (laughs) Like, it's amazing. Like, they really bring a lot to the table. You just have to use their skills. They're not going to be the friends that you're going to take on, oh, this is just a laid back, we're going to play video games weekend. No, don't take them on that one. But party weekend, they're going to make some stuff happen. Actually, that's great for that. What I would say on the work side, they're really good for getting someone. You need a cheerleader at work? Mm, mm -hmm. Get an extrovert. Yeah, that's true. So even if you don't want to speak up at the meeting or you have an idea, they will back you up and run with it. And you're good. You had the idea and it kind of flows on. Have have an extrovert buddy, linebacker, cheerleader, whichever sports metaphor you want to use. You know, and that is so true, Um, especially like if you need like a front facing, back facing, like even if you're more of an extroverted introvert, so I'm usually the more gregarious of the introverts that I know, so usually I'm the one in the delegation who ends up the spokesperson, Mm -hmm. like when we have to like stand up as a group, you know, so you got to figure out how you're going to use all of your people in the squad. So Janice, I feel like we've gone through many different issues with introverts from planning your parties to in the workplace to what if you're like trying to become a social media maven. But what is one, one quick tip that introverts can use to boost themselves in their career? What's one quick thing? We already talked about canned emails, so that's not your thing. (laughs) Wow, that's a good question. Um, to boost their career. Don't be afraid of being an introvert, but don't use it as an excuse to not do things. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm, That's both a call in and a call out. I like it. Good. No, and because that's true. A lot of people can really lean on this as a crutch, which I used to. And then I had to have a sales job so I could no longer be like, I'm shy and quiet. <laughs> it was like, no, you got to sell cell phones if you're going to keep this job. That requires talking to people. So it was extroversion by fire. And it's very true. <laughs> if you're an introvert, you can really fake it with the best of them. It's just a matter of being like, you got to do it. You got to be motivated. You know they can't see this, right? You know when you oh, do this. Me and Janice are on video, so we're making a lot of fun faces and hand motions you can't see, dear gentle listener, but they're there. In fact, I should have just recorded what we were talking about before and what no doubt we're going to say after, but... I'm going to actually, since we're getting to the end of the interview, I want Janice to be able to share exactly where we can find her on the internet, making another sweeping hand motion as I say that. So Janice, where are you on the web? What are you doing? How can people work with you? Wow, three questions at once. I hate people who do that. Dude, (laughs) I do that all the time. When you listen to this back, I ask you three questions with every one question, Janice. That's my style. Oh, I know, I know, but you still love me anyway. It's so frustrating. So I quick. know. Where to find me? My website is thecareerintrovert.com. And to be honest, on most of the social medias, if you stick that in, you're going to find me. I try to make it as simple as possible. I don't even know what the other two questions were now, see? Um, <laughs> Okay, so what am I doing? What are you doing? What am I doing? I am, wow, I help introverts 
professionals who are looking to go and upgrade their career, to level up, whichever like fancy word you want to use right now. I don't know how hip this will be if you listen to this 10 years later. Yeah, so, that's good point. Right? <laughs> level um, up, kids. <laughs> yes. um, basically, use your introversion to help you to, to know more about yourself and to use those things that you know about yourself, good, bad, ugly, to get what you want out of your career and out of your life. And that can change over time. People get stuck thinking that because they did one thing, they have to do it forever. Or if they change what they're doing, it has to be along the same vein or the same profession. And that's not true these days. So there's so much out there that you can do. And it's just having enough belief in yourself that you can do it. And also learning the skills that will help you get there. And if you want to work with me, if you want to hear more about me, go to thecareerintrovert.com. I am on there. I do three month and six month coaching sessions. I do a one-off session if you're panicking about something. I used to be in recruiting. So if you want to do an interview, because that's a real pain point for introverts uh-huh. i've done that, that a lot so those are the places you can find me and to be honest if you hit my website you'll find all the other amazing things that i do as far as a podcast or a youtube channel all those other things not writing though i have some books and they come from my other content that have been videos or interviews or that sort of thing the myth is introverts are supposed to be good writers not nah, so much it's not that I, i'm bad at it i just don't like doing it so. <laughs> You know what? And and Janice, I accept you. I I this is a safe space. Oh. I accept you, Janice. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be a great writer because you make great videos. Mm. Why wait why why mess with that? Have it transcripted. There you go. Have exactly. someone else figured out the commas and all those sort of things. I have an introvert uh writer that I use and she's amazing. I've been using her for years. Oh, there ooh. Ah might talk to you later so (laughs) anyway guys before me and janice just like take this in a whole other direction as we do um because it's hard for me to keep on one topic when we're chatting i'm gonna close out this interview so make sure y'all check out thecareerintrovert.com and thank you so much janice for being on my show you are most welcome sammy yay and thank you all for listening i'm sammy gardner and this is the career kickstart show Bye. Change your career, change your life at careerkickstartacademy.com.